Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Ali Reza Mansuri and today I will be talking about awake craniotomy. Your neurosurgeon may be offering an awake craniotomy to maximally preserve function. This is typically done for brain tumors where we want to remove as much of the brain tumor as possible while preserving your motor, sensory and language function. There are other functional assessments that we do as well, but that is a topic for another video. An awake craniotomy is a purely team-based approach with the patient at the center. The neurosurgeon performs the procedure and the mapping, the anesthesiologist makes sure you're comfortable and pain-free, and the neuromonitoring team is the one who will be doing the assessments in communication with the neurosurgeon. The patient being at the center has to be completely comfortable with what to expect on the day of the procedure. That's why it's important to ask your neurosurgeon all the questions you want and make sure that you walk through the procedure step by step so that there's no hiccups. This is not the time to be experimenting. We have to be completely ready and on the same page to make sure everything goes well. In order to prepare for the array craniotomy, typically we do an MRI on the morning before surgery. Further details of that have been provided in another video on craniotomies in general. The MRI that we perform allows us to have an intraoperative GPS coordinate system to make sure that we are as accurate as possible. It allows us to have an idea superficially what the projection of the tumor is so that we can plan a minimalistic incision as possible. During the positioning, we want to have your head fixed in a skull clamp so that it does not move. For that, we need to apply pins and that is why we need to communicate with our anesthesia colleagues to make sure you're pain free. During the initial positioning, you are sedated and you are not experiencing any pain. To make sure of that, the neurosurgeon also administers additional freezing in specific anatomical locations on the skull, which freezes the scalp and makes sure that you don't feel any pin site pain or incision pain. I usually inject additional freezing at the site of the pins, but also around the incision to make sure you're absolutely pain free. Once we're done with the exposure and we're ready for the mapping, we ask our anesthesia colleagues to lighten the sedation. Surprisingly enough, the brain does not have any nerves, so the actual mapping does not hurt. But if you do have any pain or discomfort, you should let the team know so that we can make sure you're comfortable. Once you're awake and interactive, the neurosurgeon and the neuromonitoring team start interacting with each other and start the mapping process. You may be asked to count numbers, repeat words, name objects on a screen, or move your arms and legs, or simply tell us if you're having any pain or tingling or discomfort in your face, arms, or legs. Once the mapping is done, the anesthesia team provides additional sedation so that the rest of the procedure can go smoothly. We may wake you up one or two more times to perform additional mapping, but typically we do all the mapping all in one session and you go back to sleep. The rest of the procedure is performed as previously described in our craniotomy video. I hope that gives a general overview of what an array craniotomy is. I look forward to having you for our next video on endoscopic scalpy surgery. 